Hey, Home Talkers, welcome. Are you ready for another DIY demo? I'm Sharon and I blog at I Restore Stuff and I'm a home talker. So I know you guys are all sorts of crazy talented with all sorts of stuff you come out with. I love getting the uh, Home Talk emails and seeing all the awesome stuff you're doing. Today's demo, we're going to be doing a plant stand, if you saw my post. Um, and a pot. So we're going we're gonna to be taking this ordinary plastic pot and turning it into this with a rustic, weathered, textured look, as well as the plant stand, which was just an ordinary speaker stand. So my husband was going to throw these out and I said, hey, we can do something with that. And so they stuck in my to-do pile until now, until this awesome stuff came along, Fresco from Fusion Mineral Paint. So this is the product. It comes in powder form. So we're going to be showing you how to um, do that with the speaker stand. But I just thought I'd show you a few little things that I've already done with Fresco. Uh, this is just a little vase pot. So if you look inside, it was just a terracotta pot. And we've made a nice weathered old world rustic sea swept look on there. Here's a lamp we've also done in Fresco, dry brushed over the top of this rustic finish here and we also revamped the lampshade with fusion mineral paint so that's another great thing you can do with fresco you, there's a few different ways you can even use it so you can even add it to your paint to make it more of a matte chalky finish so we've done that with this i've partly um, waxed it on top so you can see the antiquing glaze going in and this is undone here but you'll see this lovely crackled finish and we'll show you how to do that so another demo board and there's lots of different ways that you can use with metallics, um, glazes, all sorts of finishes you can get with the fresco. So I hope you're excited. Um, let's get stuck into it. I'll uh, shove this over here. Move my lamp out of the way. While we're waiting for some more people to join us, why don't you tell me where you're from? Is there anyone else from Australia here? Lots of Americans. Oh, I thought there'd be lots of Americans. So, good day, everybody. Canada, anyone from any other parts of the world? Chime on in. Um, okay, so I will start with this pot. Just shove this out the way so we don't get that in. Starting with the pot, what we want to do first of all is to scuff up the surface, okay? So because it's plastic, you want your paint to stick really well. So I'm just going to use my Sandy Hands sanding glove here. Um, it's just a little grip that sticks on, so that's awesome. I'm just going to sand away, giving it a lovely scuff. There we go. And that's just roughing up the surface so that we've got some grip for the paint to stick to. I also like to do just on the inside here because we're going to be painting just up here because you know your dirt only goes so far so we don't want to see this terracotta coming up to the edge of it and that's all you need to do. So we've scuffed that. Now to mix up our fresco. So I'm going to be using fresco powder and the uh, soapstone grey to go on the base of our pot. Now in my demo today with this speaker stand I did use two layers with the fresco in it but you really only need to use the fresco on the first layer that you're doing but for this purpose so that we can make them look the same I'll just add a bit of fresco to here. So we want to do one part fresco powder because I'm going to use this same colour for the base of my speaker stands. I'll do an extra little scoop here. But the ratio is going to be one part powder to two parts paint. So here's the powder and I'm just going to guess because that's what I do. So we're going to just add probably about double the amount of paint to what we've got fresco in there. And you know what? If I'm getting towards the end of the pot and things are looking a bit lumpy, it really doesn't matter because fresco, the lumps are great. I've got a little wire whisk, so we're just going to 
stir that in, mixing it up. <coughs> see the lumps in there? Well, that's still okay. We can see a little bit of lumps down the bottom there because that's what we want. So it only took a few seconds to mix that all in. Wash out your whisk. Now I like to use a brush that's kind of old. <coughs> I don't use my favourite. Um, but you can still wash out. Fresco washes out in water as well, so it's all good. So we're just going to glob it on the whole entire bucket here now. And as you can see, it's pretty quick to just slop it on. So this is working like a charm. Whoop, we're glopping now. And with your brush, you can kind of go any which way and you'll get more of a textured look as well. <clears throat> in this first layer, I haven't got as many lumps, but that's okay because in our second layer, I'm going to hit that fresco with all the lumpiness we can find. I'm do the bottom of my bucket because a bit of a perfectionist here. So where have we got anyone coming from Australia yet? Tuned in. Oh yay, we've got some Australian people. Adelaide, yay. New Zealand, awesome. Go down under people. <laughs> That's so great. And our USA people just kind of from everywhere, in and out and everywhere. If you've just joined us, if you've just tuned in, we are using Fusion Mineral Paints Fresco to create a sea swept weathered rustic look. So here we go, we finished the pot part in grey, but remember we've got to do these inside bits here because we want to get that covered so we don't see that when we put our plant in. There we go, all done. So that was pretty easy to do. So while this is drying, I'm just going to move it aside and pick up our speaker stands and we're going to do the same thing with this. I've started a little bit on the, the other sides to get my, give myself a little head start. But here I'll show you, hopefully you can see some lumpage. Now when I do the white fresco over the top you'll be able to see a whole lot clearer probably. If, see we just splosh it all over. I'm going to just whack it on. <clears throat> Thanks to my awesome husband who's doing some great close-up shots here with his little camera. <clears throat> yes, he is thumb. <clears throat> I told him he better do good or I'll make him eat a Vegemite sandwich. And See, he's um, half American because he was born <laughs> in the USA. And he does not like Vegemite. Anyone else tried Vegemite? Like, come on, Americans. <laughs> okay, and if you've just tuned in, we're using... Fusion Mineral Paints Fresco to create an old weathered rustic look on these speaker stands. So this is what my husband had for his speakers in his little studio and he was going to throw them out and so I thought you know I could use them for plant pots but I didn't want just the wood so we're going to create this rustic weathered look with Fresco and see, I don't even have to fully cover all the wood because it's all about layering and texture. This one's looking more like a chalky matte finish. I'm not seeing a lot of the fresco lumps, which is probably just because I might have mixed it in a little bit too well. If you saw earlier, I didn't really mix it a lot, so that's okay. <coughs> I'm going to add more texture. Now I'm going to just pop this down so you can see the top of the speaker stands and we can just go every which way over here <clears throat> you can even just grab a big bunch and just glop it on there there we go get all those edges just maybe catch any drips see this is the kind of thing your kids can do because it's so it's that rustic weathered look. 
that just doesn't have to be perfect, neat, or anything. So, there we go. We've got that sort of drying now. So now I'm going to show you, I might just use the hairdryer to speed up the drying process. And we'll show you on the pot here how you can also get, so if you leave this out in the sun, you'll get the same kind of effect. Um, it is a nice sunny day today, but we'll just try the hairdryer to dry this and you'll see some nice crackles happening. So, go on. There we go. Let's see. You want to have it on your hottest setting. Let's see if I can get this part here. If you've just joined us, we're using Fresco, the new product by Fusion Mineral Paint. Um, it's a powder that you mix with your paint to create a few different looks. You can create a chalky matte finish with just by adding it to ordinary paint, ordinary acrylic paint. Um, so you can add it to your Fusion paint. See, we've even got some Fresco powder stuck there, which is okay because it's all about the layering and lumpiness so that's cool so we're getting a bit drier here um, another look which is kind of the look we're doing here is that rustic weathered textured look and we're doing it with layers so a bit lumpy it's happening Woo. so Nearly got our pot dry, and so while the uh, speaker stands drying, we might go on with our next layer with the pot. I'm going to find some crackles here. It's not quite crackling the way I thought it would, but it did on my original one, so we'll just go a little bit more, see if we can get some crackle with the heat drying it really quickly. The paint tends to get that nice crackly look. Great, okay, that's looking kind of dry. So normally, normally you'd let that dry for a little bit longer, but because we're doing an awesome live demo here, we're going to be just leaving that like that. And I'll just put this speaker stand over here. I've got my awesome friend, Shireen, here today, and she's gonna help me with the hairdryer, because, you know, she's awesome. How many likes can we get for Shireen doing the hairdryer? Come on, people. <laughs> She's going to dry my speak stand for me over here. Thank you so much, my friend. You're awesome. <clears throat> All right, so then I'm going to mix in with the fresco some limestone colour. So this is a nice white. So we're going to have a real contrast here with the white and the grey. I'm just going to wash my brush out here from that grey paint. Stick this down here. So new bucket. Again, I'll show you, if you're just tuning in, we just made up a batch of fresco before. Um, this time we're doing it with the limestone colour, Fusion Mineral Paints Limestone. And I'm going to use, this time I'm going to just make it a little bit lumpier. I'm going to use one part fresco, so actually using two scoops. And I'm going to try and make it a bit more equal with the ratio, just to get a few more lumps happening. So here's our limestone. It's a nice creamy, maybe with yellow undertones in the limestone. Here's my brush. To dig to find my whisk somewhere in the drawer. Okay. So we're going to just mix this around again. You just need a little wire whisk. You can also just use, let's just use this just for something different. A little wooden stirrer. Maybe we'll get extra lumps. So you can see the powder just mixing in there. 
if you end up, so it is kind of a guessing game, but the ratios, yeah, one part powder to two parts paint. But for this example, I'm trying to make it a little bit lumpier. So you can see I've made it, it's almost like cottage cheese. But don't eat it, even though Fusion Mineral Paint is totally environmentally friendly, totally non-toxic, VOC free, it's awesome stuff. So I love using their products because they've made Fresco just as, it's just got three natural ingredients. So awesome. Rhett, so that's ready to go. Just going to get my paintbrush and you can see the texture in here. We're going to add to that now. So this is all the fresco we need. See the glops of lump here, but watch this. Yep. It is really lumpy. So see we've got lots more texture on this because I've mixed up a little bit of a drier ratio. Sharon, you're doing an awesome job hair drying in the background, <laughs> drying my speaker stands, if you can hear that noise. That's my friend Shireen, she's just doing an awesome job. She tells me she's totally not crafty, but I'm getting her to do this stuff because I think she's just totally awesome. Anyone can do this, Shireen, okay? Okay, I believe you. She believes me. <laughs> See, look, you can get the kids to do this. Check out that lumpiness. It's, it's literally like, almost like you're wiping cottage cheese on this bucket, but it's not cottage cheese, it's fresco. This is so much fun, guys, because really there's no mistakes. See how I'm leaving a little bit of the gray to shine through? You can see the texture of the gray is now sort of coming through with texture of my white. And I did say this before, normally you really won't, wouldn't have to use fresco in both of these layers, but because I'm just experimenting and having fun here, I'm going to use it on both of these layers and then we're going to do a third layer over the top of that. So, whoop, there we go. Oh, there's a nice lump, whoops. How are we going? Okay, we're gonna just remember to go inside the tip rim of your bucket, your pot. So this is a plant pot, if you weren't here earlier when we started. This was an ordinary terracotta pot. I don't know if you can see the insides of that. It was just a plastic pot. So you can do this with any plastic pot you've got around the house. Um, and we're just going to go on the insides a little bit so that we don't see plastic terracotta. That's faux terracotta, really. It's not real. It's just plastic. Um, so we don't see that when we put our plant in. Okay. So I don't know if you see that right in close. You're doing an awesome job, babe. My camera guy. Three cheers for the camera guy. Um, my wonderful husband. Yeah, you can see really lumpy, lumpy texture coming through. And I can't wait to get the hairdryer on this now because I think we're gonna get some great crackle stuff with that. If you um, missed it earlier, my blog is iRestoreStuff and you can find me at i-restorestuff.com. Thank you, Shireen. Let's just, I'm gonna give you the plant pot. How about that? Did you wanna come over here? See, she didn't want to be on the camera. <laughs> come and just dry my, <laughs> come and dry my pot for me. And that way, Marty can get the visuals because hopefully we want to get some really cool crackling happening here. Can we go pretty close? Yeah, you can go as close as you want because you want it to get really hot on the paint. So that's awesome. So I'm going to just go ahead and keep going with the speaker stand and glop on my awesome textured paint up here, textured fresco for a awesome weathered rustic look. Wow, these speaker stands um, never looked the same, they're ne never going to look the same again. 
If you want to come up on top, I'll show you this. Uh, see, we've even got screw holes here, and we're just going to try and fill them in with the fresco because that's how we roll. But look at those lovely big chunky lumps there. Um, if you want to buy some fresco, you can head to one of the retailer sites, which the lovely people at Home Talk will put the links in the comments. We've got fusionmineralpaint.com and you can find your local retailers there in Australia or New Zealand. If you're coming in from, tuning in from there, you can go to refinished.com.au to find your local fusion retailer and they'll sell, they sell them in the smaller sizes and the larger sizes. Sorry, I've stolen Shireen so she can't check your questions, but we'll make sure we get to all of your questions even when we're finished our demo, I'll make sure I go on and answer it, all of your questions. So, can you see any crackle yet? Are we happening? It's looking very nice and weathered. And see, it doesn't matter if they get the little lumps get knocked off too, because see, I love this bit. Look how lumpy that is. Ooh, guys, so yummy. Looks so European, doesn't it? <coughs> Old world. Whee! And here we go, we're just finishing off the speaker stand here as well. Getting some lumpy goodness on this. We're sort of going any which way, but the end result is going to be stunning, amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in, Home Talkers. I love watching all the uh, DIY demos, so don't forget at the end you can subscribe to Home Talks Facebook Live and see more of these demos of all sorts of creative stuff that people are doing all over the world, like right here in Australia. Yep. Okay, you can see it is pretty easy and it looks like I'm making a great big mess, but just you wait and see. Got to make sure I get all these columns here. You can see some layers from underneath, we can see some wood. Um, and we can see the grey, which was the colour soapstone from the Michael Penny collection, Fusion Mineral Paint. And then I've layered with limestone on top. I don't know where to touch now. I don't know what I've painted. Um, it's okay. I'm hoping that I don't run out of mixture here, but if you want to go through those ratios again, we've done one part powder. On this case I've almost done one part powder to one part paint, but it's usually one part powder to two parts of fusion mineral paint. <laughs> How are we going on that pot? It's drying. Yeah, it's starting to see some of the yeah, crackles. crackles. See Sharon, you're a natural, I tell ya. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna just get the base done at least. Yeah. And we've got some bits are lumpy, some bits are just smoothly painted. It all depends how much you kind of smush it in with the brush. Um, there we go. I think we're on the last leg here of the speaker stand. And then we'll get back to our pot and add the final layer to our pot, which is just gonna be beautiful. If you saw in the background here, I don't know if you can see, there's the green pot over there that I've done earlier. And you can see that's the weathered rustic look that we're going for. So the first two layers I've done on both of these projects are the same colored 
paint with fresco. You've done the grey and the white. But our final layer are going to be different. So on the pot, I'm going to be using a beautiful uh, fusion colour called Upper Canada Green. And on the speaker stand, I'm going to be using Pebble from Michael Penny's collection. Beautiful colour. Okay, we're looking like we've got it all happening here. Sorry, if you're asking questions, I'll get to them in just a minute. Sharin's just being too busy here for me, drying my pot. Doing an amazing job. <coughs> get the last of my fresco and use it up. Just going over. And if you've got any great big lumpy bits, just knock them down with your paintbrush in about a few minutes time and you get a lovely different effect as well with a brushed, brushed look. Turning this around. I haven't painted the underneath part here, but I'm just going to do that later because then I'd have nowhere to hold it. So much fun. In Australia, we've got holidays, school holidays coming up. So here's a great project. Get your painting gear on and do a fun project with the kids. Turn something that you've got around the house. If you've got any ideas of things around the house that you would use this on, just pop them in the comments and we'll um, love to hear from you to see how you would use this fresco. You can use it on furniture, you can use it, as you can see, we can use it on plastic. Uh, there's probably so much lying around the house that's unused or in your shed that you might think, yeah, I'd love to use that. Okay, speaker stand kind of done. Is that looking pretty dry? I think it's dry. Alrighty, yeah, look at that crackle. Yep, happy for you to do that one. That's awesome. So, if you've just joined, we're doing a DIY demo with Home Talk, and um, I'm Sharon from the blog I Restore Stuff. And today we're using Fusion Mineral Paints Fresco, a powder that you can mix with Fusion Mineral Paint to get an awesome, weathered, textured, rustic look. And we've done that right here on this bucket, and my friend Sharon has use the hairdryer to just speed up the drying process and we're getting some lovely crackle along there and you can see little bits that have been too lumpy are just kind of getting knocked off so that's fine. So for our pot we're almost to the final step so we're going to add this green colour. So with the green we've got Upper Canada Green and I will just use this brush. I'll come around here for you. And all I'm going to be doing, because we sort of, we're just really just brushing without any fresco on it. You know what? I'm just going to decant this into another jar. Actually, here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, so we've just tipped a little bit of that into the jar. I forgot that I'd already done that. So here we go. Um, we're just going to get our brush, wipe it off a little bit. And all we're doing is painting straight over that fresco. Which is super quick and easy to do. Fusion mineral paint I love because it's got just such great coverage. And um, I know we've put those lovely layers on already and we're covering it up. But just wait because the super surprise comes at the end when you do the next step to sand it and reveal the beautiful, lovely textured layers from underneath. So, wow, that's, I just love that texture right here. We're getting. There we go. Looking beautiful. I love this green. Such a pretty color. How are we going? We got that speaker stand is getting dried by my good friend who's come to help me. Alrighty. Guys, look at that. See how quick and easy that was to just paint. Now, of course, we don't forget the inside because we 
need to make it match in the outside. So we've done all of our layers on this little bit on the inside. If I'm looking a bit awkward, it's because I am feeling awkward right now with all this stretching to try and not touch the wet paint. But hey, us DIYers, we should just be proud of wearing paint. I wear paint to school sometimes on my legs and hands. Okay, to drop the kids off. But I'm sure none of you have ever done that. <laughs> all right, so there's our green, and that's all we need to do for the pot. As you can see, I've done the base of the pot as well. So let's just finish that off because I think we need to color the bottom as well. <clears throat> there we go. So I've covered the base in green also. Finished with our green. How are we looking? Awesome. The speaker's here. Not quite. Legs are a little bit wet. All right. That's okay. Because now we're just fully running that hairdryer. I hope it doesn't die between now and our Facebook Live finish. But anyway, um, I'm just going to need to probably dry that for our final step, Shireen. Sorry about that. But, you know, you're doing an awesome job. More likes for Shireen, everybody. She's so mad. She was like, I'm not going to be on this. I'm not going to be, yes, yeah, Shireen. You're doing awesome. Good at She's good at drying things. You're doing so good. So for our speaker stand, our very final step, and I know Shireen said this hadn't quite properly dried, but we're just going to lightly paint over our final coat. And for that, we are going to use the colour Pebble. Um, Pebble from Fusion Mineral Paint, and it's part of their Penny & Co collection. There we go. So we just need a little tiny bit because we're just, you know, it's our final coat of the whole fresco project. And we are not mixing fresco with our final step because this is the last layer and we're just kind of giving it a bit of a, it's not a dry brush, we're just, you can dry brush it because that's what I did with uh, this lamp up here. You remember I showed you this lamp that we did. That's actually dry brushed over the top of a limestone mix with fresco. So you can see all the lovely grooves showing through when you dry brush over the top of something like that. <clears throat> so, but all I'm going to do is get our pebble and lightly brush it over the top. Now, you'll still be able to see the texture, but I'm covering up all the underneath layers. But that's okay because in the final step, we sand back to reveal the beautiful surprises of colour underneath and the layers. So that's all you need to do. So easy. Like I said, kids can do it. Wow, look at that great big lumpy bit. That's great. So we'll just pop this up again. If you can hear the hairdryer, I'm getting the final coat of the bucket, the planter pot, the pot plant thing. <laughs> I'm getting that dried so we can finish our final step, which involves sanding, with a wet, wet sanding actually. But here we are painting pebble, beautiful colour over this texture. So right now it looks like I'm just painting all over the layers, covering it all up, which I am. But you'll see in the end, whoop, that will reveal all of those beautiful textures and colours when we do our final sanding step. Thanks so much for tuning in, Home Talkers. Leave your questions and comment comments, I mean questions in the comment section and we will get to them uh, in just a minute. I love that there's so many people from all over the world who watch these DIY demos, such a great way to learn new tricks. Um, some of you guys are crazy talented. Blew my mind with some of the ideas that you come up with that I see on Home Talk in my emails to my inbox, and I go, wow. They did what? Just amazing. All right. 
Is it drying okay? Yeah. You're drying good? Really okay. Let's see lovely textures in there. And if anyone's getting worried about my beautiful table being painted, it's my husband's fault. He said, it'll look so much better without a drop cloth. <laughs> no, it's okay because I said, you know, it's a workshop. That's what it's meant to be for. And, you know, we DIY can just do anything. We can paint it or we can sand it back, make it look beautiful again. It really doesn't worry me. So this is a really old farmhouse table and that's the original paint there, just for a little bit of extra information in case you wanted to know. And um, I've also got, I'm pretty sure I did a home talk post on this exact table if you go back and look at my home talk page. And uh, it's the original paint, but what I did was covered it over with like a sealer, tough coat sealer, so that it seals in any of the, you don't want any nasty like old lead paints hanging around your house. So, and it was chipping quite a lot, so I covered that with some tough coat sealer to seal in all of that the old paint. And the top, I'm pretty sure on my uh, home talk demo, we talked about that I covered that with hemp oil, which is a lovely um, oil that you can use to bring out. It really revives old wood. Great product. Hemp oil, I love hemp oil. Anyone else tried it? Let me know in the comments. Such a great, um, it even goes over paint for a nice finish, dries to protect milk paints, chalk paints, that kind of thing, so beautiful. We're nearly finished painting a speaker stand, but let's call it a plant stand now because that's what it is. It used to be for my husband's speakers, no longer needed them, tossing them out, but you know, who knows, DIY people just kind of go, no, we can't, we can't toss that out. <laughs> All right. Getting ready to finish up very soon. How's that going, Shireen? Yeah, I think it's pretty dry. All right, you can turn the hairdryer off then and we can we'll look at that. So for our final step of the pot, here we go. So that, that'll just stay drying. And if you want to come in close, you can see this lovely crack, uh, texture here that we're going to do one more step to just reveal even more layers and beautifulness with the sanding glove. So our final step is just to sand back a little bit. But what I want to do is wet sand and I'll use a cloth to just wipe away any of the excess, um, which is how we got this lovely look here. So you can still see it's quite heavy with the green still. Um, so I'm just going to wet my glove. Oops, I should have just done this like this. Here we go in my little pot of water. And these sanding gloves can be used wet or dry. Um, you can also use a sanding sponge if you like. So, and Sharon, tell me if there's any questions that we need to answer that we've missed because I've had you so busy drying. Oh, are lots of people wondering where you can get gloves from? You know what, my auntie actually invented these here in Australia, she's awesome. Um, so you can get them, there's someone in America, you just look up sandyhands.com S-A-N-D-I-H-A-N-D-S dot com, Sandy Hands. And you'll be able to find all the retailers wherever she's selling them. They're selling them in Europe and UK. So if you're from there, you can get them there, here in Australia. Okay, so what we're doing is just roughly sanding over the surface. And now you can see, look at that, that old world texture coming through. So here, We've wiped it off. Whoops, we're rubbing a bit of the paint off the top there, that's okay. And look at that. And a bit of a circular motion, so we can just see a little bit of the grey coming through as well. Did you 
you get that? Is there anything else? Any other questions anybody had? Really? Rubbing that off, it's almost done. So you can see we're kind of looking like the pot over here that I uh, did on my home talk post. I'm nearly finished. So I did say earlier that you could leave out one of those steps and just use one layer of fresco mixed with the paint and then your final coat would just be the layer of the green on top. So there we go. Lovely old world finish. There's our pot. Oops, I think I'll just put a little bit more on this one. Yeah, I'm loving that texture. Make sure I get it off with our pot. Um, you may want to leave it a little bit longer than we did to dry as well. Um, just to make sure you really get that paint sticking onto your pot surface as well as you can. <coughs> there we go. Final coat all finished on the pot. Woo! Making a mess with our glove, sanding glove. I think I'll have to use another one for the um, speaker stand, which hasn't quite dried yet, but so all that all that you need to do for the final one, I'll post a final picture at the end of the comments for this one, for the speaker stand, but you can see that it's going to have that lovely texture again coming through on the top there. It's not quite as dry as I'd like it to be, um, but just have a look at the pot there. You can see that over there we've got it pretty much matching what we saw over there, and you can see the speaker stand here too, so I'll bring this around for you. So we can see them. Ah, so these are well, they're plastic, so they're kind of waterproof for outside. And the and the you can use them outside. It it may be a bit weathered. I might have to just check with um, others on that from Fusion. But you know, it's pretty. It's got a good hard factor. It's like really sets well, cures well. Um, yeah. So, but we'll double check on that. Make sure you can have it outside, especially if you've sanded parts of it. I'll answer that in the comments. So if you see, we've got a little bit of wet paint still happening here. So if we sand back this, it's going to be just looking just like this with the colour there. So we'll let that dry, get all that crackle happening again. And there you go. So don't forget to check out the next, um, hit subscribe after you've finished watching this live video so you can see more demos that come up on Home Talk. Thanks so much for joining me today. See you later from Australia. Visit me at i-restorestuff.com and I'll answer as many questions as I can after this in your comments. So thanks so much for watching. Bye.